Salut, moi c'est Lei Nangsu de Star Wars Univers. Je suis avec Kieran Gillen, le scénariste de la série Dark Vador et le futur scénariste de la série Docteur Afra. Hey. Hi, I'm Adrian. I'm with Kieran Gillen, the writer of the Darth Vader series and the writer of the upcoming series Doctor Afra. Mm. Thank you very much for meeting me. Thank you very much for having me. First of all, my first question is simple. How did you become a comic book writer? Um, I start, the great joy about comics is that it is uh, a fundamentally democratic medium, as in I have a pen in my pocket, I can start drawing on this table and that would create a comic. Um, so my background is I got into comics late, I got into comics properly when I was about 25, uh, and like within six months of starting to do that, I had actually um, written my first script, talked to artists, and you know, and it, six months after that I was doing my own black and white photocopied fanzines. Um, in terms of actually being a professional comic book writer, I kind of slowly segued into it. My kind of, um, I was doing stuff in the small press with a guy called Jamie McKelvey, who's my partner in crime still, uh, and we had an idea for a book called Phonogram. Image asked us to pitch it to them. Uh, we did, they said yes, and that kind of was released and became a, a minor sort of indie black and white celebration thing. And that kind of led to the rest of our career. So it's that kind of we basically just messed around as like a, a garage band until we were good enough. And that's my kind of my background. If you read comic when you were a kid, which were your favorite comic book, comic series? <laughs> as an actual, basically, I, st I read them like in Britain. It's quite hard because we don't have a, a really. It was quite hard to get hold of comics. Like I read the British comics. Yes until I was about 11, 12 and then there was no comic shop in my town so the stuff on the new the stuff on the shelves were, were like you know not what I was interested in and I came to it much later um, as an actual kid I mean 2000 AD like most British you know a lot of British people stuff like the Beano and the Dandy which were like the you know the fun kids comics um, I read like the reprints of the American superhero comics because they used to basically put like 60s X-Men with 70s Machine Man with 80s Spider-Man so you had no idea about the story how it connected but you got the idea of the world um, most specific there was a comic called The Bruins or All Willy which is a Scottish comic my mum's Scottish so my early like trips to visit my family up in Scotland were re reading this and it's kind of like train spotting as it's all written in dialect uh, and I had no idea what's going on But that was, all, that was also weirdly influential in this kind of um, soap opera of Scottish people who sat on buckets a lot. Uh, so that. Oh, and Transformers, the, the British Transformers <laughs> comics. Which work are you the most proud of so far? Well, um, never pick between your children. It's like, kind of, if I genuinely, if I had to choose a single volume of anything I've ever written, I think like one book, it would still be the second volume of Phonogram the Singles Club, which is a very weird burst of something. I'm kind of hoping by the end of The Wicked and Divine, the book I'm currently doing with Jamie, that whole thing will be the, the one we're talking about. Um, but I feel like I've been lucky enough to have a career that's like long enough now, but there's definitely different books I have done which I'm proud of in different way. I think Darth Vader's probably the best mainstream book I've written. Um, you know, Journey to Mystery is my best kind of like weird Marvel book. You know, they, 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 they feel different gaps. But yeah, you know, Across the run, Darth Vader is probably the best piece of popular writing I've done, which is nice. Now we get into the Star Wars part. Hey. <laughs> so, Darth Vader series. Did you choose the series, or did the series choose you? I must say, if I was a man who believed in destiny, <laughs> I, uh, you know, there's certain. I said like, the first movie I ever saw in the cinema was uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yes. You know, so my first image of evil on the screen was Darth Vader looming into the frame. So, the fact that I'm writing a prologue to my entry into pop geek culture, yes. that's <laughs> a weird one, you know what I mean? And that's only one person got to do that, and that person was me. Yes. And I'm, I'm actually quite surprised my brain didn't just sort of phew, fry over it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> It's like, uh, I, on a more practical level, oh no, the book chose me because, you know, Marvel phoned me and said, Kieran, do you want to do Darth Vader? And I was like, yes. I, after a while, I, I generally did spend quite a while thinking whether it was right. Because it's like, as I said, only one person gets to do this. Am I the right man for the job? Yes. Uh, and I had to really think about that. 
I read you thought about killing Afra at the beginning. <laughs> When did you change your mind and no, why? I always wanted to, like, I didn't want to kill her. In fact, I don't want to kill anyone. The thing is, most of the characters, like, if I could, you know, I don't only kill people if, it, if the story dictates it. Yes. And it's necessary. In the case of, like, Afra, it's like, I can't work out a way to get out of this. And it's, there's definitely two readings of Darth Vader, and one is... You know, will Darth Vader kill Aphra? And the other reading of the whole story is, will Aphra find a way to escape from Darth Vader? And that's kind of, there's a, it depends who you consider them, you know, it's the perspective of two different characters. Um, so if I was always, as Aphra was, I was always looking away for her to get out. Okay. And like, logically, Darth, you know, Darth Vader killed Fainoff. I mean, the Fainoff in issue 19 was kind of explicitly, you know, if Darth Vader was at all a good person, he would have known Fainoff is trustworthy. And Darth Vader cannot, will not take that risk. Um, so Aphra is this kind of the push and pull between her death wish. Yes. And that part of it really, really likes this stuff. I mean, the last line we put in the issue was the, um, that was fun, let's never do it again. I don't believe her for a second. You know, she's somebody who is, goes too far, and go, oh no, I don't want to do that. And that push and pull is very key. Um, I was very happy when I worked out a way to survive her. Like, oh no, that makes sense. And even better, because if it was something she just worked out towards the end, it wouldn't. The fact that, you know, from literally the, the first real scene she invaded us together in issue four, that's, you know, that how she survives is set up there. That's pleased. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Was it scheduled to stop the series at the 25th issue? Well, we just decided, like, um, scheduled was the wrong word, but it's, um, you know, we thought, it's, oh, yeah, this is a good time to end it. Like, we kind of always knew it was going to be a story with a middle, beginning and end. Uh, and we like when we hit Vader Day, and we realized, oh yeah, we're nearer the end than we thought we were. And so we wrap it off, and it's 25 issues, and two of those issues are quite long. A couple of specials, and you know the extra issues of Vader Down. That's almost 30 issues. That's quite a good novel length chunk, and it's kind of like it feels like a big movie. You know, you can you know you'll you can sit down, watch A New Hope, read Darth Vader, then watch Empire, and you'll get something from it. And that's what my kind of hope is anyway. So you tell us the whole story you had planned. I'm sorry? You I know. Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, like, part of the reason me doing is Aphra, as in the stuff I would like to do with the characters, but then the stuff I wanted to do with the characters wasn't necessarily Darth Vader, mm. you know? I think like this, you always knew my story would end with Darth Vader on the bridge of the Executor going, mm. now I'm going to get my son back. You know, that, that's, you, that was the only yes. way the story could have ended. It's like Titanic, the ship sinks. Um, But the other stuff I want to do, like, you know, with Afra and uh, Black Chrysanthemum, I've done very little with. And bits with the droids, it's not Darth Vader's story. Yes. Quick question. What is your favorite issue? <laughs> Good question. Um, the first with, with Afra, maybe? <laughs> I thought it was like, I'll wait to see how people... F I, I won't know, because um, there's still lettering of the Afra, as in, you know, it's all drawn, and, you know, I've done the lettering draft. I won't know how I feel about it until it's all done. Uh, Issue 24 was really good. The kind of like the the weird the dream sequence is just. Yes. I like that because it was so weird. I can't quite believe we got away with it. Maybe, uh, but like the end of issue six, that that whole back half, that's like that that yes. half of the issue that that I got to write. The you know, you know when Darth Vader realizes he has a son, yes. that's a very powerful thing I've got to write. But you know, issue 19, is it 19? Uh, where uh, Fainoff and Vader just are in a whole having that issue is just two big long conversations and I love that issue um, and there's, know, there's bits in almost all the run which I'm like oh yeah that was cool uh, we got to do that and it's just 25 I'm really very happy with 25 too and your favourite cover there is <laughs> <today. laughs> uh, uh, picking one is cruel oh. the, my usual I mean there's so many the, my usual answer mine is this one <laughs> uh, you can't go wrong with him Scotty knows what to do my favorite is this one Mike Del Mundo ah, yes. uh, Mike Del Mundo it's, uh, it's a realistic mode painting of Vader's mm. face mask with Anakin standing like a tiny child Anakin standing between it yes. um, and Mike is not only an amazing painter Mike's an idea guy you know you look at his picture and he's telling a story uh, I love I mean Mike's one of my favorite like artists and I always want to do more work with him so I'll go with that but I mean, look what Poss this spread. We, there were so many really interesting covers, and like there's so much with poetry to them. Um, you know, I, I mean, like even like the first one. You yes. know, we we got that. That's really and we're doing a book about Darth Vader. You know, all the issues that Salva did. I mean, Salva doing that cover worked really. Sorry, issue 24's cover worked really well. You can go through all of this. There's so much good stuff there.
all the um, uh, Gimenezes. Right. Last issue. I mean, he's one of my favourite. <laughs> I mean, I'm an enormous Meta Barons fan, which is meta, is an is an astounding comic. It's one of my favourite things ever. So for him to do that cover, that meant a lot to me. Um, uh, I can say, I can, literally, I can, if you sat me down, I could talk all the way for the cover and say what I like. There's an enormous array of talent. Okay. Last question about the Darth Vader series. At the very end of the last issue, there was a story called Coda. <laughs> yes. The events of this story are very mysterious. Can you explain us this story? It's it was like fun. I was trying to do a story about the Sand People's perspective on Darth Vader. Yes. As in other words, like, there was, it's like, okay, 20 years ago, there was this thing that happened, a guy with a glowing sword killed a load of us, and it was basically like Satan for them, and now it's happened again, Yes. and the response to, we've got to make it not happen again, oh no, we'll do a big enormous sacrifice, this basically demon, so the idea that Darth Vader is kind of like the, the Antichrist, the yes. Satan to these people, you know, to the people who were the people who were his, you know, who... More, not more than anything, but you know, loss of his mother was just an enormous event for Anakin. You know what I mean? So the idea of Darth Vader as becoming a religious figure, and that kind of speaks to what Darth Vader is to us. You know, Darth Vader is this first image of evil, uh, and you know, this speaks back to my own like that. So like Darth Vader kind of ascending to a primal form of evil, and that's kind of what that final image is about, I think. So did Anakin is the man in the shaman? vision it was it's telling it's more like him telling a story so the shame is like i like the idea that these people have told the story about and that that what happened when anakin walked out of the village they've been telling that story for like 20 years yes. it's like be careful or they do with the red sword will get you um and now it's happened again you know yes. that's the kind of it's such a an enormous out of context disaster for the um the tuscan raiders um so yeah that was kind of the vibe the idea okay this happened a long time ago and now we have to try it's happened again we must work it away we must you know the equivalence of like the volcano god is angry so now Afra I was asking myself did the last Darth Vader's comic was postponed because Afra series wasn't ready no uh, it, uh, they just took a long time I've written the scripts like way before uh, and they just wanted to basically make sure it was all perfect I think um, I, I generally don't know <laughs> to be honest <laughs> Uh, but of course, the reason why we didn't announce that series was because we didn't want to sort of spoil the fact that Afra had survived. Yes. You know, that was the kind of that was the reason why the series, the second series, its name wasn't announced. Uh, but yes. In fact, I did. I deliberately. Actually, I better not say that. Carry on. But yeah. No. A big part of our readers think there is a lack of ambition in Marvel's comics. We see that with the names of the series, Star Wars. And Solo, Darth Vader, Princess Leia. Only series about characters from the movie. So will Afra be a series more surprising, more ambitious, maybe less movie-like than the others? Uh, tricky. I mean, like, when you say movie-like, it would depend Star on... Star Wars movie-like. It depends what you mean. There's at least a degree yes. of the fact that we are trying to do Star Wars on paper. Uh, how to phrase this? Because, <laughs> you know, I'm quite... Um, I mean, I, I must admit, I kind of disagree with the thesis. I mean, like, I, I think actually trying to do Star Wars on paper is kind of the big point of it. Uh, the idea it should feel like... I regularly say I would like my mum to be able to read our comics, and I, don't, I mean that because Star Wars is for everybody. Yes. I mean, Star Wars is simultaneously for the most hardcore fan in the world and for the most widest audience. And the idea is, can you do something as pure and beautiful to apply to both? With Afra, of course, Afra's not like any of the archetypes of Star Wars, so her story is going to be different. At the same time, I wanted to feel, oh yeah, this is Star Wars. This is a high adventure story set in a science fiction universe. And Kev Walker is such a big part of it. Kev Walker is an astounding artist. He's got his long history in 2000 AD. He did like lots of Warhammer 40K, weirdly. Uh, and, it's, um, and he's a, so influenced by the originals, you know, when he saw the original trilogy when he was younger. That sort of made him want to be an artist. Um, and that comes across on the page. So it's like it's, it's for me. It's always a case of like trying to give something that's simul, something that is simultaneously Star Wars, but simultaneously nothing you've seen before. Yes. And that's always the aim. That's yes. what that's what I tried to do with Darth Vader, uh, and it's of course your choice whether we hit it or not. What are you allowed to tell us about this series? I promise you, <laughs> nobody in Disney and Marvel takes care of French websites. So you can reveal <laughs> us everything. I think. I mean, also, I don't really want to say too much more, and it's that kind of like because it's quite. I mean. It's quite fun to just pick up a book. This is Afra, 
kind of getting back to her archaeological roots. She's yes. trying to get back to her life before Darth Vader. The problem, of course, she is hiding in hiding from the Empire, because if Darth Vader ever discovers she's alive, she's dead. Yeah. Um, and she's trying to basically pay off debts. She owes an enormous amount to the Black Christmas Hand. Yes. Uh, she's got these two droids with her. I don't think Afro realises how dangerous the droids are. <laughs> um, she does, but I don't think she does, no. And it's kind of... And she's trying to get back to her life, and something happens which basically up, upends up entirely. We go back to her childhood, we go back to her relationship with her. Not spoiling too much, her dad, her dad enters the story. Because, you know, her mum died when she was young. Uh, and there's a, a complicated relationship between them. And they go on an adventure together, and it involves finding... An, an ancient past thing. So it's that big kind of heroic kind of archaeologist two-fisted adventure story. And it's fun. I've just been writing them um, and it takes us to some fun settings. You'll sort of see what I mean. It's like the kind of, um, you want it to be like something new but also something like something you haven't seen before. That's kind of so much what we're trying to do. It's like, it's like archaeology of the Star Wars universe. You are the one who introduced the most of new characters afar. Uh, Wookie, Bounty Hunter, the True Droid, etc. So and I killed a lot too. <laughs> yes, also. Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, 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 when I actually wrote that uh, script, I actually did ask the story group, "Can you see any reason why Darth Vader wouldn't kill him?" Because I couldn't like. I, I wanted him to, you know, because he's a good ca he's a good character. Yes. Uh, and it's like no, it no you're right. Surprising. It's like Darth Vader yeah. has to kill him. He, and I knew that. They knew that. There's no way out. So you were saying. Any new characters in this ongoing? Well, I've mentioned her dad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there'll be quite a lot of new characters. I mean, like, there's... Um, yeah, there'll be new characters. I kind of like... The story group... One of the things they regularly say to you is a big universe. Yes. Like, you want to, like... There has to be a mixture of stuff which feels... You have to, you have to innovate because it's such a big universe. And if you don't, it's like... Not every crime lord has to be a hut. You know, that's kind of the, that, that would be the one example I would use. You don't have, not every deal has to involve Jabba. And you know why you do it, because you want, you want the fresh run of the movie. But at the same time, that doesn't really serve. Uh, so, so much of what I'm trying to do is make ideas that have a suitable Star Wars scale without being stuff they've seen before. I mean, like, in Vader... I'll give you an example. A good example in Vader for me would be the, um, the place where the ants lived. Yes. So the uh, the the casino was basically a cloud city, but inside. So it's a bit like cloud city, mm. but it's also like cloud city in a in a storm. So like if you imagine like the place, there's, there's a constant storm outside it. That's a kind of Star Wars visual, you know. And so all the way through, trying, okay, what could a cool planet look like? Like the um, the shooter run, the idea. Yes. Okay, we've we've seen like molten planets and mine planets. Let's make this a bit more like a weird aristocracy. So it's a little bit of June, but hopefully mm. not too much that. So that's kind of what you go through, like. That's when we're trying to invent these worlds. We know Marvel is not afraid to stop a series like Darth Vader with uh, literally a ton of sale if, yeah. if you sell it to them. <laughs> it's, it was a great choice. And, you know, yeah, this is a really good selling book and they stopped yes. it. <laughs> it's like... So my next question is, how many issues for Afra? Depends. I, like, I'm, uh, I will write it until I... Um, also, I would like basically at least part of the reason why I took the job. Yes. In that, because I don't want to do any more work for hire. That's the kind of like I'm not doing. Uh, like I've been offered some really incredibly cool jobs like in the last year, and I just don't. I want to concentrate on my own writing. Like I, I do Wicked Divine for you know Image, and some new stuff. I had to do Africa because I felt I hadn't finished creating yes. her. So I want to stay on her until I feel I've defined her as a character. And I don't know how long it will be. <laughs> Afra is known by the characters of the Star Wars series and she's not hiding from them. Moreover, like them, she's avoiding Darth Vader. The enemy of my enemy <laughs> is my friend. Is a crossover with the Star Wars series uh, is plain. I would wait, wait and see. Something with Sana and Princess <laughs> Leia. Go, go that's, that's the question many people have asked. <laughs> yes. I, I think that is definitely a no comment, but that it would be an exciting story to explore. Yes. Okay. Finally, I know you are a very active, almost a hyperactive writer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So maybe another secret, super secret Star Wars uh, series uh, is playing? Uh, I, have no, I, said, I have no plans to do any more work for hire currently. I mean, I'm, actually, I'm doing one issue with something, which isn't Star Wars. Yes. Um, and I just don't have... I think it's... It, Where'd you go after Darth Vader? <laughs> you know what I mean? As in, I've enjoyed, I've really enjoyed all the stuff I've done. Yes. And you know, 
and I would never say never. Yes. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for answering my question. It was a real pleasure to meet you. This is a formal handshake. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, stay tuned and keep interest in the universe of Star Wars and Star Wars universe. <laughs>